Good morning. <laughs> okay, let's see. Ta da! Um, because we're going to be talking about chaos and because whew, I just stepped up on the stage, I'd love to invite everybody to take a nice deep cleansing breath with me, <laughs> keeping with the West Coast theme, okay? So here we go. All right. Whew, let go of all of the outside world and be here now. Uh, so I chose this as my opening picture, not because it's the best picture of my family or the highest quality image, but because we're going to be talking about chaos, and that's me. <laughs> so I thought that was apropos. It's a little how I feel inside right about now. And um, so thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey. When I was asked to speak and I found out that this was the theme, um, I was really excited to sort of delve into this. A lot of what I do, as Tina said, and thank you, Tina, by the way, for the beautiful introduction and for having me here. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, so a lot of what I do is exactly that to help spread my father's legacy. Um, he doesn't need any help in terms of the sort of kung fu, martial arts, action film star portion of his legacy, but a lot of what people don't know is that he was a, a philosopher and a very thoughtful man, and he was extremely self-educated. He read thousands of books and would underline and annotate and wrote hundreds and hundreds of pages about martial art and how to live life. And so um, that is why his, that is the foundation under which is this, you know, um, extremely dynamic image that you see and you feel the energy of him coming off the screen when you watch his movies because he worked on himself. So when I was asked to talk about chaos, um, I thought, OK, uh, what does my dad have to say about that? <laughs> so in the middle of chaos lies opportunity. And uh, if chaos, we all know chaos as um, this disorganized, confused state, right? Uh, we may also know chaos as um, it's sometimes characterized as the void. It is the living void. It is that sort of uh, disorganized primordial matter right before distinct form takes place. And so we're going to talk about what opportunity lies in the middle of chaos. But I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey, if you'll sort of go with me, on my experience of chaos and what I learned from it and how it brought me back to my father and his words. My father was masterful. He was masterful with chaos. As a fighter, his training was actually extremely helpful in this regard. Because what is a fight but chaos? Uh, it's an attack. It's unfolding. It's spontaneous. You don't know what's going to happen. You have to be proficient, you have to have skill, and you have to be able to respond in the moment. And so that training um, made him really quite masterful, and also because his training wasn't just physical. It was mental, it was emotional. Um, he was a deep thinker as well. And so it made him very masterful with this notion of the unfolding chaos. Um, so we're going to talk about the true nature of chaos, about my experience with it, and how I um, came to experience it uh, the hard way and very accidentally, um, so that when maybe you're staring into the void, uh, you'll remember some of these words. My father died in 1973. I was four years old. Uh, he was obviously not expected to die. He was one of the most uh, physically fit men on the planet. He was 32 years old in the middle of a, a career. Uh, his major film, Enter the Dragon, had not been released yet. Uh, so he had not enjoyed that um, global fame. 
But in Hong Kong, where we lived at the time, he was very famous and beloved. So when he died, it was um, quite a shock to the community. These are photographs from the funeral. Uh, thousands of people lined the streets. Uh, it was a very public affair. There was press. Uh, my family was, you know, proceeded through this melee. We wore traditional Chinese morning outfits, that's me, on uh, my mom and my brother. And we were placed on the ground in front of uh, his open coffin. And I don't really actually remember any of this, um, except that I remember the feeling of it. I remember the experience of this chaos, of this overwhelm, of this uh, crush of sadness, of shock. And really, the way it felt to me was sort of like in a movie when um, there's some you know, really hectic scene going across the screen, and it's in slow motion, and there's no sound, and you're just, that's sort of the way I, I remember it. And that feeling was sort of embedded in me. And in being four, I was not really able to process that. But you go on, <laughs> you live your life, and um, you grow up, and, and you keep going. Then, in 1993, right before my 24th birthday, um, I was living in New Orleans, and I had made a plan that I was going to move back to Los Angeles and start an acting career. And I had talked to my brother about that, and I said, um, OK, I'm going to move back to LA. We were going to get to be adults in the same city um, for the first time. He was going to help me with my acting career. So I'm in New Orleans a few months before I'm slated to move back to LA, and I get a phone call in the middle of the night, and it's my mother. And she says, um, there's been an accident. Your brother's been hurt. We need to go to Wilmington, North Carolina, where he's filming. And uh, you're going to get on a plane. I bought you a ticket. We're going to meet in, I don't remember, it's like Houston or Atlanta, and then we're going to fly to Wilmington together. And I said, um, OK. Um, and we got on the plane, and that's exactly what happened. And we arrived in Wilmington. And it's a small airport, at least at the time. So we exit the plane on the tarmac, and we um, are headed to the terminal. And my brother's fiance comes out to meet us. And she puts her arms around my mother, who's a few st steps in front of me, and says something to her in her ear. And I watch her knees buckle. From that point, we go uh, to see him, my brother. Then we just have to start planning his funeral. It's 20 years later, and um, he was 28 years old. So we don't, um, he doesn't have a will or a burial plan, and so we decide to bury him next to his father, our father, in Seattle. So we fly to Seattle, we bury my brother, then we fly to Los Angeles, and we have um, a memorial service for friends and family there, and then I end up back in New Orleans. <laughs> and it's about three weeks later, and uh, I don't have a job at this point. Uh, it's still a few months out from my move to Los Angeles. I'm not really sure what to do. Um, so I just keep going. And I get a job painting, not art, walls. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it's perfect because I'm in such a state that all I have to do every day is go and get my roller and my paint and show up and roll paint on walls all day long. And I'm doing this, I'm about a month in. 
And one day, I'm rolling the paint on the walls, and all of a sudden, my hands buckle. And I sink to the floor. And I realize I haven't taken a deep breath in a couple of months because I'm holding on for dear life inside my body because I don't know what to do with what has happened. And this was really the deepest sense of chaos that I have known. For me, because I was not raised um, in a faith, um, I didn't have a context for death or for life, really. And not that you need to be in a religious faith, I'm actually um, fine with that, but I hadn't created my own sense of faith. And so I didn't know like, well, what had happened, why had this happened, what had happened to my brother's soul, where was he? I really had lost, lost order of the universe. Nothing made sense to me anymore. And so, here's where we get to the part that in the middle of chaos lies opportunity. If the void is this living space before distinct form is created, then chaos is the opportunity to create. For me, I needed to restructure the universe. <laughs> I couldn't understand how people were going about their daily lives. I, I was crying all the time. I was depressed. I moved back to Los Angeles. I started an acting career, and on the outside, I was fine, but on the inside, I was in complete chaos and turmoil. And I had this mantra that was going on repeatedly uh, in the background in my head, which was, help me, help me, I don't know how to live like this, I don't, I can't be in this pain. And that mantra, I really believe, because it was sort of a cry from my soul to the universe, was, uh, began to lead me. And it led me to um, books to read, healers, friends, people to talk to. And I began to create and restructure life for myself. And one of the places that it led me was back to my father. At this time, uh, my father's many writings were being gone through um, for, for potential publication, and so they were out. And I started going through them, and I started reading them. And they were a huge factor in the healing and the creation of, of life for me from that point forward. And I found words of his such as, we shall find the truth when we examine the problem. The problem is never apart from the answer. The problem is the answer. And I found words like, the medicine for my suffering I had within me from the very beginning, but I did not take it. My ailment came from within myself, but I did not observe it until this moment. Now I see that I will never find the light unless, like the candle, I am my own fuel. And it was these words that began to orient me and began to create for me an order and a structure to the invisible. What I came to realize in my own healing, in the creation of my healing along this journey, was that I had been in a lifelong depression, mild, since the age of four, but that initial uh, 
Im embedding of the sense of chaos in me at that age had created a numbness in me that I had been carrying. And it was through the processing as an older human of my brother's death that um, I actually have found the most happiness, the most joy, the most peace I have ever known in my life. So now let's talk a little bit about creating from chaos in a shorter time period than maybe three decades. <laughs> uh, and this is what I really want to give to you. Thank you for bearing with the uh, long story there. I hope it didn't totally bum you out. But, um, but uh, it has been profound experience for me in my life. So... The thing about chaos is it's the moment right before distinct form takes place, right? So you can't hang out there. When you're hanging out there, like I was for many years, you're, you're a little lost at sea. I was drowning in my grief, and I was hanging out there, partly because I didn't have consciousness around what to do. And uh, I didn't know how to begin and how to create. And I think as creatives, a lot of times we understand <laughs> this feeling, right? Um, so hanging out in chaos and, and not uh, uh, creating in that moment prolongs our pain, it prolongs our suffering, even if it's just hanging out in procrastination for long periods of time. And so, if, if uh, my father had a lot of words about the void, and if the void is really the living void of chaos, he said, the void may be said to have two aspects. It simply is what it is. You're in it, you're hanging out in it. And it is realized, it is aware of itself. And this awareness is in us, or better, we are in it. And so the opportunity to create, if we are aware, if we are conscious, then we can uh, see the opportunity and we can begin to shorten and bridge the gap between that disorganized sense and whatever we're gonna build, whatever we're gonna craft. My father was masterful at this because he could hold his center and be fully present in chaos. And so if we can hold our center, if we can learn to question and dream and act and express, in that moment, then we too can be masterful. My father said that the true stillness is stillness in movement. If you can hold that center while all around you, everything is, is moving, then you are truly anchored and rooted. To me, Chaos is the wilds. It's, uh, there's beauty there if we're not afraid. It's the wilds before we have found the great swimming spot or the amazing trail or uh, the small cabin in the woods. And so if we can approach it with a sense of curiosity, a sense of adventure, consciousness, intention, and a sincere heart, then we can shorten that time period and begin to create with excitement. I created for myself profound healing and a profound relationship with the universe. That was my creation from chaos. And I've learned, thank you. <laughs> and I've learned to bridge the gap faster as I've gotten older now that I'm more aware, and to hold my center, and to look for what needs to be born faster. 
So I'm going to leave you with some words of my father's about his posture for meeting chaos. And they are not being tense, but ready. Not thinking, but not dreaming. Not being set, but flexible. It is being wholly and quietly alive, aware and alert, and ready for whatever may come. Thank you.